Welcome to Keys to the Kingdom streaming broadcast on Tuesday night, our Tuesday night Bible study from Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. We praise God for another glorious, glorious opportunity to come together and to, to share together in the Word of God. Uh, we pray that you've been having a great uh, week thus far, and we pray that you're going to have a, a fantastic uh, week continuing. So let's open up with a word of prayer, and as we open up with a word of prayer, then we'll come back and begin our teaching for this evening. So Father, we just bless you and we praise you for uh, you who have begun a good work in your people, and you who will continue to do the work. Dear God, our mantra, our anthem is that you were busy before we showed up, and you're going to continuously busy uh, working a universe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In every specific of your creation. And God, we bow before you. We bow before you in admiration. We bow before you uh, in your awesomeness. And we bow for you in, in what the wise man told us, in reverence of you, dear God. We thank you now for your work in Jesus Christ. You bruised him for our sakes. It was a work for the for the for humanity and a work for the earth and a work for the advancing of your kingdom throughout we bless you we give you the praise bless somebody tonight dear god through this particular medium dear god bless somebody help somebody heal somebody deliver somebody instruct somebody bring our ignorance to an irreparably irre, irreparable state that we can't find it anywhere, but that we will be enlightened, dear God, in your truth. We love you. We give you honor. We give you praise. Give us uh, insight tonight, even from your holy word. And we will be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And we say, amen, amen. Okay, well, somebody just take a moment before we get into the word with me and just give God a strong hallelujah. Bless you, dear God Almighty. Oh. <laughs> Bless you, dear God Almighty. Well, I could just stay there for a while because I feel like praising God. I feel like worshiping Him. When you come into the 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 uh, uh, presence of God uh, through your understanding, uh, uh, just getting a a a a sight of Him, uh, it 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 causes everything within you to to humble itself. Um, I've met, I say, for lack of uh, words, uh, getting a sight of Him, getting some type of picture of him our understanding tries to grasp him it, it always fails though because the bible even the bible tells us that he's exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think he's able to do do those things like that and uh so when you attempt to make that uh grasping of god <laughs> That's all you can do. That's what I'm doing. You break out into a, a smile because you know you're you're, you're looking at his his, his awesomeness. Uh, it, it it ends up in questions like uh, some people have uh, gotten to and and became frustrated. Who created God and how could he be? How can there be a single being? <laughs> <laughs> that's why we call it faith and i'm not ashamed to say faith because uh as you begin to believe then something happens on the inside of you and i i know the, the, the biology people will say oh that's chemistry <laughs> well, i say it's my spirit something happens inside of us and we begin the bible says we have the witness inside of ourselves uh, the name of God through Jesus Christ can bring about transformation in your life, can bring about a total revamping of your life, can take you in a moment, transporting you from sad to happy, transforming you from habit to free, transforming you from uh, 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 needy to bless. Amen. If you believe me, praise God. Or if you don't believe me, praise God. Uh, just mention to God, I don't understand you like 
I would love to understand you. This used to be my prayer all the time. But I'm interested, God, if you can make known unto me your name. I'm a why person. I always ask questions like why. I taught my son <laughs> when he was younger. I wish I, I wish I didn't. <laughs> he used to cry every time uh, we would tell him to do something or not to do something. He'd cry. And I sat him and I said, listen, son, sometimes just ask the question, mom, dad, why? Why should I not do this? And why should I do that? He started saying why to everything. <laughs> After that, I was saying to myself, man, I wish I didn't teach him that. <laughs> But that's that's it. God doesn't mind you saying, asking him why, and if you and he uh, 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 has a divine administration concerning the word of God here in the earth, and he will give you an answer. There's a verse of scripture that says, "If any man lacks wisdom, if any man lacks uh, um, uh, understanding, if any man lacks wisdom, it says, let him ask from God." But don't ask wavering. Don't ask. If you ask believing, uh, God will give you an answer. Because <laughs> the Bible says he won't withhold from any man. Okay. Wow. I just feel myself wanting to just praise God and exalt him and to lift him up and to extol him in the, uh, in the program tonight. But I got a continuation teaching that I want to uh, deal with. It's a prophetic word. And I, 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 those of you who know me know that that. That's my, I may not go to the place where I say, thus saith the Lord, and then begin to, to recite off uh, what I'm seeing or hearing or believe I can move out of the way and let a flow come through me, uh, which would be a prophetic uh, declaration. But those of you that know me so that, that understand that I, I, I do get into that lane, uh, but rarely. Uh, my, my prophetic things come uh, from the scripture. Uh, God wants to give me a word for the uh, now or the people. He'll just give me a word from scripture. And I believe this is a word, uh, one of those words. We started on Sunday talking about something that I call the equilibrium imbalance. And we did. You'll have to go back there for the Sunday, in other words, to get the teaching because I won't be able to, to go back there again today. And I'm not going to be long today probably 25 maybe 30 minutes at the most that I'll be today and uh but the uh uh, uh, uh I want to try to tie in today with what was said on Sunday and um and this is important this is important I believe it it has bearings to a lot of what's going on in our world today a lot of what's going on in the church today and uh, 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 out of everything else, uh, we need to hear from God. We need to understand where is God in the midst of uh, all of these things. Uh, Jesus was hanging on the cross, according to the scripture. And the scripture says, OK, where is your God? If your God is uh, you, you saved others, now save yourself. You delivered others, now deliver yourself. This is what the people began to say about uh, uh, Christ Jesus as he was hanging on the cross. And this is what they'll say about us if, if, it, if we don't have an answer. The Bible says, always be ready to give an answer concerning what the, the hope that we have inside of us. And I'm going to give you an answer, praise God, according to what I'm receiving from the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I want you to judge it, do whatever you feel. You, you feel necessary to do call me write me subscribe so that we can talk amen I, I, I am open praise God to helping to God correcting me not just correcting me but also uh, 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 giving me more and more insight to upgrade my faith hallelujah to God hallelujah so, so let's get let's get on with it amen let's let's get busy in the word amen we talk on Sunday about a mystery that we saw in the scripture, uh, I dealt with uh, the ideal of light and darkness. And uh, we dealt with it from the place in the scripture in Genesis, the first chapter where we talked about, and the, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And as we dealt with that concept, I, again, I don't have time to go on. It's a beautiful teaching. I wrote a book on it. On, on just that concept, but I wrote it in prophetic, uh, uh, prophetic and, and poetic form. It was called The Eight Days of Creation. Now, I've got a new book that's going to be coming out called, called The um, Equilibrium, uh, 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 The Arising uh, Equilibrium, uh, The I Equilibrium Imbalance. Arising, 
uh, of the day star, uh, the new beginning, and the equilibrium imbalance. And um, that concept deals with, uh, if I, we went back over into Genesis and tried to tie in briefly what was said uh, uh, on Sunday, it was that uh, when God, after the first day, uh, well, in the first day, God called, he said, let there be light. And we know that wasn't the light of the sun. That wasn't the light the light reflected by the moon because those things, the sun and the moon, were not going to be created until the fourth day. So in the first day, there's a calling forth of a certain kind of light. And we say that light meant manifestation. When God said, let there be light, he said, let things manifest. Let things come forth. Where we had before, uh, nothing was manifest, manifested. It was just God. And we don't have a lot of information about what existed, what, 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 what was called time, what was called space, what was called matter. We don't have a, a lot of information uh, from the scripture about what time was, what space was, and what matter was. We only have the information that says that God existed before the foundation of the world and that the faculties of God the, 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 had the ability to do predetermination of many things before matter showed up, before time showed up, before seasons or any of these things showed up. And so God dwelt in the that the, the God dwelt in the uh, I don't want to say the nothing because uh, it, it implies that there was nothing but God dwelt in the time before there was something we call the something or the matter God dwelt in 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 that place and according to the scripture the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. According to that scripture, he chose us in himself before the foundation of the world. Now, we don't have a lot of information on what was our state or how did we exist. Or, or, but we know that there was, a, there, was a, uh, there was God. And according to the scripture, there was the, the, at least the concept of a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. There's a concept of the angels and, uh, 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 and all of these things that exist exists before we have Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning. Uh, Ephesians, uh, the, the first chapter, explain, uh, explains it like this, that God chose up, Ephesians 1 and 3, God chose us in himself before the foundation of the world. It doesn't begin with in the beginning or, or at what we call the, the starting of time. You know, it, it begins with uh, uh, before time began, before the uh, 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 matter came forth, in the beginning God had a, min a mind set concerning what he would create in terms of humanity what our uh, 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 what our um, what how, what type of relationship we would have in him and he, he, he even sparks our destiny because he says uh, 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 he chose us in himself that we should be holy and then he talks about how he will predestinate us unto something called adoption in Christ so it gives us a picture we, we have a clear picture of God's existence before time before the beginning and then we start in Genesis 1 where it says in the beginning in the beginning. And we looked at the first thing that he did. He says, hey, God said, let there be light. Now, again, we said, we, we talked Sunday about light and darkness. And we know that this particular light that he's calling for is not the illumination that came from the sun because the sun is not created yet. And this is the illumination. This is, this is a word for manifestation. It's a word when God says, let there be. And th uh, things came into existence. But here's the, here's the mystery that we looked at. God, we never see in the beginning, in the first day God saying and let there be darkness no he doesn't do that he says let there be light 
But there's a principle that as the light came forth, darkness came forth also. That's a that's a mystery. And, and we have to look at it in order to understand many things. And I, I can't go over those things today. If you get that little book, it's a little book, probably about 50 pages, and that deals with the eight days of creation. It, it, it alludes to this idea of where did darkness come from? Because we're not talking about darkness as the absent of the illumination that comes from the sun. The light that comes from the sun, uh, when that light diminishes, so to speak, then we have the darkness of what we call, uh, that comes in what we call night. It's not talking about that absence of that light. Darkness that represents something else here in the first day of creation. When God says, let there be light, now all things began to come forth. Can you imagine for just a moment, all things coming forth at the beginning? Catch what I just said. Now, all things coming forth. God says, let there be and all things coming forth. Now, this is a great mystery too. I, I look at this, I just get amazed and blown away because this, uh, the science says that, that when we look into the universe, we've looked f- as far as we can look and things are still looking as though they are t- continually expanding. <laughs> and so when God said, let there be light, everything came forth. It just zoom, boom. It all came forth. It was a, it was a situation that occurred that, uh, where everything came forth. At least that's what we have in scripture. And then the, 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 the form, the formation of all things came off. The first form, it seems at least from the scripture that we see is that it came forth as water. It came forth in a watery kind of formation. How do we know that? Because when we get to the second day, we'll see the Holy Spirit begin to deal with the waters that exist. And, and he'll, 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 he'll move upon the, uh, uh, the, the face of the waters uh, in a one dimension. And then he'll separate the waters from uh, uh, the waters and create the skies and then the waters c- will create the dimensions and then by the time we get to the third day we'll see God calling forth the dry land out of water so that we, we, we have a little information about what the composition or what the form of, of things uh, were in terms of when God says let there be and they came forth they came forth in the likeness of water came forth in the likeness of water and then we have we we understand the scripture says and god or the holy spirit he moved upon the face of the waters now we list uh, uh some characters that we began to see in this first day of creation the water god god who said uh the light when uh, god said let there be light and the darkness the most important thing i want you to remember about this day is that light came forth but darkness came forth also. <laughs> we'll understand that in a little while. We'll understand who is darkness? Where did he come from? How did he get here? God called for light. And here comes darkness pulling alongside of it. Oh man, this is good. Amen. And once you understand this, you'll understand certain principles about creation and you'll understand uh, 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 certain things about why God uh, 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 said uh, thus and thus. I was going to, uh, uh, in my scriptures for today that I, uh, uh, that I uh, uh, hadn't gotten to, but I'll just kind of quote them. Is, uh, the first one comes, uh, the, first of the, the first of the Ten Commandments. You remember what that was? Uh, that's in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, where God says, don't have any other God before me. That's the first of the Ten Commandments. The first. Seems like one that doesn't seem all that important, uh, 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 but God puts it at the head of the list. If you deal with me, and, and I'm, I, I, I'm a believer in something called the everlasting gospel, the good news from eternity past in the glorious future and is, is going to last forever and evermore. Uh, 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 Revelation chapter 14, and I believe it's verse 6. Uh, 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 and seven where God says, uh, worship God and only him do you serve. He says, uh, 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 that's it, it, pretty much the same thing as what he said in the old Testament, but, uh, it's the first 
of seven mandates that deal with something called the everlasting gospel. Worship God and only him. Now these things, these seem and sound very simplistic, but uh, uh, it, it will take us some unraveling for us to see the importance uh, concerning what is God saying and why is he saying these things. So we have in this first chapter, we have in this first chapter, uh, the first day, uh, God saying, let there be light, the darkness running alongside of it. Now, I want to point to uh, back to, again to something we talked about Sunday. The light ran its course. It, it manifested all that it was supposed to manifest, it, uh, manifest and call day one. But look at it. Darkness came right alongside of it because God didn't call darkness. Uh, and we're not talking about a lack of illumination. We're talking about two different things. Darkness came forth, but uh, excuse me, light came forth and darkness came forth also. Now, in the evening uh, uh, that when light came forth, evening means when light was about finished bringing forth everything it was supposed to bring on that day. So here we see a term introduced called process. God is in a process. That's why we have day one, day two, day three. God's in a process and process, uh, uh, the light brings the process of day one to an end and it's called evening and darkness is coming right alongside of him in the, in the evening. Now darkness now is equivalent. Darkness is equal is still with the light. Remember, uh, uh, darkness didn't even, uh, 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 wasn't even commanded to come forth. God said, let there be light without even speaking to the darkness. The darkness just usurped. The darkness just came forth and, 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 and walked right alongside the light. So now, uh, 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 when you get to the day, e, the, the end of that day, the full manifestation of what that day is to represent and bring forth, you have darkness coming right alongside of it. And if you're not, and and, and, and these principles are very important because uh, uh, if we, if we, if 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 darkness was allowed to stand right beside light, then there would have been a confusing, uh, confusing kind of thing. The Bible says that when God said, let there be light, light came forth chaotic. It was a, cha a, a chaotic thing. It did not come forth in structure because we see the Holy Spirit in day two creating structure. He begins to put some structure. Let the waters be depart, uh, uh, parted from the waters. He begins to put structure. By day three, more structure is going to come. Let, 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 let dry land come up out of the of the waters and let seeds and grass and trees appear and uh, uh, uh and, and which is a, a great mysteries as we continue on and and I, 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 if I throw in some of those mysteries now we would get a little uh uh, uh, uh it, it, we would get a little off so I'm not going to th throw in too many of those, but here what we see is structure did not come forth in the first day the first day was a birthing a bringing forth it was everything it took the Holy Spirit in day two, amen, to begin to bring structure to it. But in day one, when everything came forth, darkness ran right alongside of it. Now, uh, then the Bible says, and the evening and the morning was the first day. And, and it's kind of uh, 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 strange that he would put evening before the morning. Because it takes it, it takes the the the, the, the light of, of of the first day God called a day, and the and the and and the uh, uh, the darkness He called night. And these are not twenty four hour periods. These are not periods that happen as a result of the sun and moon. These are the result of uh, matter coming forth, the beginning of all time, the formation of the worlds, the universe. Uh, the, this is what light and darkness is representing at this at this place. But he says uh, uh, the evening, the end of the day, the end of the day, and the morning, which is the beginning of a uh, 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 of, of new days, or the beginning of the day. The evening and the morning was the first day. 
So what you have is as light presents everything that is to be presented uh, and darkness runs alongside of it, God will not allow it to end right there with uh, two equivalent things, light and darkness. No, God, God makes a shift from there and shifts to a new day. A new day manifested, and it comes forth through the process of the original light that was spoken. Uh, because the, the light that brings forth is not operating in a process. It's not, it's not a new let there be light on, on, on day two. It's the same light. Uh, it's the same manifestation that came forth, uh, but it begins to operate in a deeper level process. Uh, it begins to operate in something called new beginnings or a new day. Why? Because day one needs needed something. Day one, if it existed all by itself, it exists in chaos. If it existed all by itself, it exists in, without form. If it existed all by itself, it existed void. Day one needed some structure. Hallelujah to God. Day one of the creation, the matter, the, 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 the formation, the, 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 the chemistry, everything needed uh, structure. We couldn't get a, a human being even in that situation yet. It had to be uh, days later. Or, or and, 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 and remember, at this time we're not talking about a twenty-four hour period because the sun, the moon is not yet. It couldn't. It couldn't handle trees and grass and any of those things because of the chaotic manner that it existed in. And and so uh, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day. It, process now began you got evening and you got the, the, the light and the darkness together again at the end of the day day one and God who said let there be light separating the light from the darkness in the beginning he begins to the mandate the process of a new day hallelujah you should be rejoicing right there because that's where God says every every praise God time when the enemy comes in like a, when the enemy comes in he, he said, like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Every time the enemy seems like he's, a, he's, a, he's about to become an equivalent, uh, parallel opposite. He's, he's created so much confusion or chaos and, and voidness and uh, no form and structure in life and in, 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 in things. When the enemy comes in and does that, God says, let there be a, let there be a new day. <laughs> And the new day comes on the scene, praise God. And the and the darkness now, guess what it does? It begins to try to emulate even the next day, the next day too, because the next day is going to end the same way. And the evening and the morning, and the third day is going to end the same way. The evening and the morning, and these are elements. Uh, 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 these are elements of light and darkness so we get the so we get to this place now and we see a process that i've given name to and i call it the equilibrium imbalance and that the way god's the process that god created when god said let there be light an equilibrium imbalance took place in the world. Now, I don't know if it's a big bang. I don't know what it is. All I know when God said, let there be light, something very uh, big happened. Something very big happened because everything, that was the beginning of time. That was the beginning of matter. That was the beginning of, of all things coming forth. And uh, 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 so, so, so the, the light that, that caused these things to exist is... It, 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 he is more than illumination. Uh, it is. He is. He. Uh, uh, he, he. He's. He's the. He's. He's the. the he, he's the one who who manifested based on the voice of God. God said and God said and ba 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 boom. God said and. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's the one. That, that's the one. He's the, he's the image of the invisible God. God said and 
Yes, 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 yes. And the Spirit of God is the administrative hands, understanding the processes of God, understanding the entirety of what it's supposed to look like from beginning to end and working from age to age to age in bringing those things to pass. Not trying to bring up day six before you finish day one, not trying to bring up day seven before you finish day two. No, the Spirit of God has complete and absolutely accurate knowledge concerning what's uh, and what is what's uh, uh, um, going to be and he's working the processes of the almighty God so we get to this place where we have this new day in a new day because of the evening and morning uh, attempting to come into an equivalent be, 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 be an equivalent God will not have it because it it it, it, it disrupts the creation it it, it it stops the manifestation it stops uh, uh, the, the, the releasing of, the, of who God is and what God wants. Uh, the, the, the darkness will come alongside and become an equivalent and create confusion in the earth. But God says, no, not so, never again. And so we ra- it raises to a new day. But darkness again raises right up beside of him. And we'll go through that new day. Darkness will come right alongside of it. And then after that day's formation, after the process of that day is complete, then God will say, let there be another day. It's all coming from the first, let there be light, uh, 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 but, but, but God works it all in a process. Now, I wanted to go back over some of that. God, I, I can't go over that every time we, we get to teaching. I probably got less than 10 minutes now to be with you on today. But the, uh, uh, here's what I want to get across today. First of all, uh, uh, for us, everything changes. And there is no such thing as stagnancy in the universe. We've got to and we've got to understand this as a human family. I, I t- had a birthday on yesterday. I turned sixty-eight years old, so I know that I won't be. I probably have more uh, uh, behind me than I have in front of me. And uh, 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 but there'll be voices, many voices uh, with great understanding that will come even after me. But here's something that we have to understand as a human family: everything changes in its times and in its seasons everything changes and there there are processes that are built into creation that cause it to change when we get over to the fourth day and we get the sun, the creation of the sun and the moon and the stars, uh, we see how they are uh, responsible for so many changes that happen in the earth. Whether it is the changing of the seconds and the minutes and the hours and the days and the weeks and the months and the years uh, and the seasons, all of these are changes that are uh, that 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 we begin to recognize and how those changes are parts of a process uh, uh, that, that greatly affect our livings. If we don't understand the change of seasons, it greatly affects our ability to, to, to see of seed time and harvest time. Everything changes. I was sitting outside the other day, uh, uh, well, yesterday, my birthday, and I was looking, praise God, uh, uh, my neighborhood has, uh, 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 it seems like it's beautiful, lots of little kids, and the kids were playing games and, and laughing, and I saw this little little girl, she looked like she was about two, three years old, just playing and having fun, and, I, and the thought came to me, you know, I was once two years old, I was once three years old and I and I looked at it looked at her and I said well and what's the difference because you know it seems as though we just move through a process we get older and 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 another generation come then they'll get older and another generation will come and as I was looking and I thought about it I said but there's a greater process also in work if we only look at just the physical and think that that's all that's at work. Uh, 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 we'll become, we'll become. Uh, I don't want to say blinded, but we won't see everything that's in work because there's a process of change. I was in my study time uh, about a week ago, and uh, 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 I had the, the uh, 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 understanding, a revelation of of technology. And I was just thinking, you know, technology 
is happening so fast. Uh, the computers, the, uh, the, the you know the bandwidth, the, the if we going to, to the fifth level of of the telephone situation. I remember looking in one of those uh, 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 these things that you put on your head, uh, and they they kind of your virtual reality glasses and whatnot, and that thing scared me, man. <laughs> I thought I was in that situation, but really it just takes your mind to a place and whatnot. But everything is changing. Everything is changing. And and it, the, the, the revelation I had at that time was that um, it's, it's, you know, some things have happened to us that we were not ready for. Uh, it was presented to us, but we were not ready for them. And, and, and what I mean is that... Uh, there's certain things that were put in the hands of us as human beings or in the hands of, or, or that we put in the hands of our children that we were not mature enough really to handle yet. Um, uh, uh, and I hate to say it, it's a beautiful thing, but even if it's not bad material, porn, 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 pornography or, or even if it's not that, by the time we put hours and hours and hours of our attention on it, it's doing something. That creates a process inside of us or not. And it, it'll hit us whether we, and we won't even know, uh, we won't even know what, what happened. If, if, if we don't know the vision of a thing, if we don't know how to handle a thing, then uh, 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 we, we can, uh, if, well, let's say this, if I do know how, uh, don't know the vision of a thing that's in operation, I can strategize a, a, I can strategize a purpose for it. And, but if I know the, how a thing operates also, I can strategize a demise. I can strategize a, a person's downfalling. If, if, if all I need to do is I, I know how it works and the other people don't know how it works. If I know how it works and the people know how it works, they can strategize victory. If I know how it works and, and the people don't know how it works, they just, they're going to get hit and they don't even know or understand whatever hit them. So when I say the idea of the process of change and that, that it, 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 it's taking place in our world and that uh, uh, many things are, happen that are happening that maybe we ourselves are not even ready for. And here, here's, the, here's the point. Here's the point. The scripture that talks about uh, 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 change happening and people not being aware of them. Uh, one verse of scripture says over in Malachi, it says that you need to go with the change. When, the, when there's a new beginning taking forth, follow that new beginning or I'll come or a curse will take place. There's a people in the, in the scripture in St. Matthew's where it talks about, uh, I think, five wise, five foolish virgins. Change took place. And, and some people didn't partake of that change, and it cost them. Or in the book of Revelation, it talks about uh, 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 people that were, they, they, they got to the place they were no longer going forward. And God says, look, I, I'm, I'm not going to have much to do with you if you don't keep up with that change. Now, here's the point. The change uh, comes, and it, it, it comes with a process. The process of change in a society uh, uh, must be adhered to. I just gave you a few things, praise God, uh, that, that showed that. Technology, the, pro the understanding the process of change must be adhered to or we will make a mess. We will make a shipwreck. We will create people uh, uh, doing things, praise God, that, that the world wasn't, it wasn't supposed to happen like that. A good tool, a good uh, 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 invention, but being used horribly. The process of change must be recognized and we must be willing to move forward into it. Now, I'm going to talk about one change from a spiritual perspective, and that's the verses of Scripture that I read in the beginning. That is, the Scripture says, in the, as the first commandment of God, He says, do not allow equivalent parallel opposites. There is no equal with God. There is a difference 
between the light and the darkness. The light is is the process of God's manifesting everything that he wants manifested in the creation. And the darkness comes alongside of it to neutralize it, to balance it. And it's going to try you. It's going to try the whole world. And so here's what we have to come to the place of understanding. The, the everlasting gospel in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6, he says, Worship God and only Him. He says, because the day of His, the date of His vengeance, which means uh, the process of change will move again. And if you are found, uh, uh, Operating in an in, in in an equal parallel equivalency uh, uh, opposite uh, from if you if you if you're caught in that place that parallel opposite that and you're making it equal with what God said without having a heart to to move into move with the Holy Spirit God will never allow Himself again. Creation itself is never again supposed to come to an equivalency or in a parallel uh, equivalency with non-manifestation. Creation should operate in a manifested, the manifest thing that came out of God's mouth, the manifest part of creation that's continuing to move forward, and it will not stop. It will not stop. So tonight... I want you to understand that it's not the will of God that we that 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 that, that the light and the darkness be equal. Next week we're going to talk about praise God, uh, the two trees in the Garden of Eden, and we're going to talk about how those uh, uh, apply to it, the equilibrium imbalance and equivalent parallel opposites. Those things that uh, should not uh, uh, should not be equivalent. Uh, the processes of God means for them not to ever be equivalent again. And um, and then uh, we're going to talk about those. Because again, these things bring a curse when you start dealing with process. Excuse me. Process of God brings us into the light every time. Process of God brings us into the victory every time. Process of God brings us into the next phase, the next move of God. Process of God brings us into into those things. And so I, I, I beseech you, I beseech you, old King James Word. <laughs> I guess you know what version of the Bible I've been studying. Uh, I, I beg of you, praise God, grab a hold to God. Grab a hold to the Lord. Amen. Because it's time now for God to make a shift. He's doing the, the things of a shift. And and uh, there's certain things that want to hold that place, want to hold that place, but it's not going to, uh, it's not going to hold. And uh, I don't, I don't know everything that this shift is going to bring, but I know that praise God, uh, it's the time for the shift. We've seen too many awesome things. Let me pray with you, Father. Let me pray with you. I want you for just a moment to say, dear God, I'm, I'm here I am. I'll walk with you. The scripture says that there are people who follow Jesus wherever he goes. There's a people who follow Jesus, not loving their lives even unto death because they have become uh, so much uh, 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 the sons and daughters of God that they want to walk in the light of uh, of his uh, 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 manifesting the image, manifesting as the image of God. So let's pray, Father, I thank you. Come on, give yourself to the processes of God. Move yourself, allow yourself, humble your heart, surrender your heart to the next level of the things of God. There is no equivalency. There is no devil that is equal with God. There is no comparison with the Almighty God. It doesn't exist. Uh, it's just uh, 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 simply something that appears as though uh, it's just a show. Here we go. So, Father, I thank you now for the new day. Come on, I feel the Spirit of God. Come on, let somebody now, let a glimpse, let a, uh, 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 let a portion of that veil be open, Holy Spirit, and let someone experience, hallelujah, the liberty. Let the atmospheres, ah, yes, let the atmospheres of a new day 
Let the atmospheres, let the freedom, the, remove the burdens of the old, uh, of the old uh, bondage and bring us into um, every aspect of the new day, the worship of this new day. We bless you. We give you honor and we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We say amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. I praise God. Amen for you. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. You are the blessed. And that's not going to ever change. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment uh, is contempt. And I know you're probably saying, Apostle, there's so many weapons in the world now. Listen, these things must be. Amen. But it's it it it, it will uh, it won't end in the processes of God uh, being defeated. It won't end in the processes of the children of God being defeated. God will bring us to the next dimension of glory and happiness and peace uh, on the earth. Praise God. Good will towards men. One verse of scripture says. And he uh, has made us into kings, a kingdom of priests. And it says, and we shall reign in the earth. Well, so God's going to give us a place. God's going to give us an operation. God's going to put us in a process that brings us to peace and blessing in Jesus' mighty name. So I want to ask you to praise God. Remember, praise God, uh, uh, the things that we're doing. We're on uh, Sunday morning and also on Tuesday nights. We're also on Monday evenings where, where we uh, have intercessory prayer with Pastor Elaine Brown. Praise God. You'll see the number on the screen there. And then also look at uh, 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 on uh, Wednesdays, we have Apostle uh, Fred and Linda Bell. Yeah, the call in number is 617-941-8343. Uh, great teaching, uh, teachers in the Word of God. Uh, Pastor uh, uh, Dr. Bell just had uh, the women's conference, Women Out of Bondage, and I've been hearing great things about it. In Jesus' name, Apostle Fred is a powerful teacher of the Word of God. Uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. You'll really be blessed if you check them out in Jesus' name. That's, uh, again, Wednesday evenings at uh, 7 p.m., but also they're on Sunday morning, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Also, Brother uh, and Sister uh, Bishop and uh, Prophetess um, uh, Ephraim and Carol Sartorius in Georgia also. They have on you, uh, Unlimited Faith and Favor, 6 p.m., uh, uh, 3D Bible study uh, group on Thursday evenings. Uh, the number is 339-209-6273. Powerful team ministry that uh, 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 is dedicated to the seeing the people of God be free, whether it's healing in your body, deliverance, uh, uh, deliverance from captivity. Just, a, just an awesome couple in Jesus' name. Amen. Check them out. Praise God on Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. And we've got quite a bit of uh, uh, persons that are uh, new affiliates that we just hadn't gotten the time to to put everybody up uh, yet. And um, uh, 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 Pastors Isaiah and Pam, a Zoom meeting on Sunday mornings at 12 p.m. Uh, ID 386-878-6313 with the password, excuse me, with the password of faith number one. We're going to uh, keep, uh, think, keep us in prayer. We're going to get the, all of those numbers up uh, uh, the, because there's, uh, there's at least five to seven or eight more affiliates that uh, we fellowship together with and that we want all of those. Uh, I want you to know all of those persons. Uh, powerful prayer ministries and powerful teaching ministries, all times of day. Uh, uh, people that we're familiar with and know that you're getting uh, people who are dedicated to the things of God. And uh, uh, so we want you to be able to check into those two. We'll make sure, and uh, as God's our help, 
we're going to get those things. Uh, remember us in your giving, praise God. Uh, uh, pass, you know, here's our ch- cash app and also our PayPal uh, coordinates. And uh, I know God will bless you, praise God, uh, uh, as, as, as you uh, are bless, uh, be a blessing to the, to the ministry. We are, praise God, we are, praise God, the apple of the Lord's eye. We are the children, the Bible says it pro- in Isaiah chapter 53, it, pro- it, it pleased God to bruise Jesus. Uh, and that was because uh, of salvation that he wanted to put sin into the earth. That was because of deliverance he wanted to send into the earth. That was because of goodness he wanted to show upon humanity and show upon people. So we are uh, the apple of his eye. We are the love of his existence. And and God, God wants you to know that. The teaching today, praise God, helps us to understand a sp- spiritual principle that causes us to to st- still to, to, to live above the powers of all the works of the enemy. Hallelujah to God. All right, so you're blessed. You're not the curse, you're the head, you're not the tail, you're the above, you're never going to be the beneath. God has commanded the blessing to come out, uh, a word that's come from his mouth that uh, uh, it won't return into him void. It's going to accomplish the thing that he sent it to do, and that is because he He loves you. Be blessed. We'll see you the next time, praise God, uh, right here at, uh, uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, shalom. Have a blessed rest of the week. We love you. In Jesus' name, God bless. Shalom.